Hello, welcome to uh, Real Magic Review. That's what it's called, isn't it? I've been having tech meltdowns, so tell me if you can hear me, because it's been terrible. <laughs> it's been, I've not had a nice time. I got all confused about everything, because, uh, hey Steve, uh, hey Steve, I'm, re I'm reading it. Hi Steve, hope all's good with you. Hey Gary, it's good with me. I am very happy. I'm just a bit wired. You know when you kind of been, you get, go down a rabbit hole of tech and audio and things like that. Stefan, how you doing? Let me know. Yay, sounds great. Thank you. Good. Um, and loud and clear. Good. Now, we'll see how the, the Zoom goes later, Stefan. Let's have a look, because uh, that's what I've been having trouble with as well. But I think we're okay. Um, it's all good. Right, just hanging out, really, today. Just been... Um, I've been very busy. So, because what I've been doing is I've been putting recording footage for onlinemagic.co where you can learn from a professional magician, Stevie Faulkner, right here. Um, and what we've been doing in the Zoom, with tonight's Zoom session is about uh, my professional repertoire, just sharing everything I do when I go out and perform close-up magic. So we're doing Ring Flight and uh, Nest of Wallets tonight, just to uh, take you through that. And my presentations are, which are very basic. Um, and I've been recording, I've recorded a new coin magic course. Now, if you are a member of the course, I haven't put the email out yet, but I've, there's about 45 or 42 or something like that videos on my coin magic course just gone on there. And I've just recorded a rope magic course, an introduction to rope magic, which I'm going to build on these courses as the weeks go on. But um, I'm very happy with them. So lots of exciting things going on. I've just confirmed a very exciting guest uh, for in about three weeks time for the Zoom session, which will be exclusive. Uh, for that session and uh, I'm scared to say in case it's not totally totally confirmed but it is but I'll, I'll put it on uh, maybe next one we'll talk about it so Magic Corner how you doing um, so check out online magic from uh, .co that's it online magic .co not .com learn from a pro online magic .co look what I just did I've got a little sound bite that's what I'm going to say I'm going to say that that's what I'm going to say learn from a pro online magic .co um and I put a video out this week, which is I'm talking about Danny Goldsmith's uh, uh, pistol pass. And I put the video that I put on the review of me practicing and practicing and practicing. It's, it's really interesting how people respond. Because it, I think we, we like, sometimes we, as magicians, we go, I wasn't going to talk about this, but I think it's interesting. Well, I think it is. As magicians, we often see the, we, we often try and put ourselves or, some magicians put themselves on as being really skilled, really flawless, really, and of course they are. But but the, I'm more interested in really the journey up to that point. You know, I, you know, I, I'm more interested. You know, when I talk to Danny Gosef about his his practice, and he's great because he always talks about practice, um, and that inspires me more. So I think that what I'm trying to do with OnlineMagic.co is share that process as well, not just say, "Hey, here's a cool thing I can do." Is going, this is the thing I'm struggling with, and, and we do that on the. As, as Mr. C there will tell you, <laughs> as, as uh, the, the phrase is, that's a very Steve thing to do, where it's, it's a bit all over the place sometimes. But I love sharing what I'm working on. It kind of overcomes that ego that we that gets in the way of our learning so much. Um, so there you go. What's confirmed? I just joined. Oh, um, I'll tell you in the Zoom. I'll tell you who we've got in three weeks uh, in, the, in the course. Anyway, so I've got my, my email making noises there. Hang on. We'll do the comments in a minute. I put loads of reviews out last week and um, only a couple out this week. So I've been doing the, the footage and the content for the course. Um, and we did the martini glass by Rose and Roy. Not Rose and Roy, Rose and Roy. Well, that's probably not how you pronounce it, I've just thought, actually. But anyway, um, I just presumed you did. But And where's the other thing? Oh, yeah. Perfect Pen by John Cornelius. I'm really surprised at this, because this has been out for a while, hasn't it? Well, the original's been out forever, but the, 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 I'm surprised how many people are interested in this. I suppose because it's a, 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 well, it's a classic trick, isn't it? And I, I kind of wonder, you know when those tricks have been out for so long, pen through anything, which I actually failed to mention in the review, that it's pen through anything. It's, it's a version of the Perfect Pen that was released after pen through anything, but the original was pen through anything. I'm not going to say that again. It's starting to annoy, my, it's starting to annoy myself now. Um, but yeah, I, I'm kind of, we see it so often that we we don't know. I kind of forgot whether it was good or not. And I showed it to a couple of people, and it is. There were a few people on the... Well, we'll go on to the comments in a minute that kind of said everybody knows about it. You know, lay people know about it. I, I'm not sure about that. I mean, I'm sure in some areas they do. Um, but I've really been rediscovering this thing recently of showing lay people things I've 
think that they would know, but they're completely flawed by. I, um, Spectator Cuts the Aces, I learned a version of that uh, with Steve Reynolds, who I'm getting some training from. Because uh, if you're a trainer, you must get training ethically. That's what I think. Um, and we did a Spectator Cuts the Aces, which is very different to mine. But but in my mind, it was so obvious. But I showed it to someone that was just like, I, I can't even begin to work out how it was done. So maybe that's the case with this. Um, but it's it's very lovely. I'll show you. I didn't did get a close up on it. I think a few people said they wanted to see it. Oh, this works. There you go. That works, doesn't it? Uh, so that's what it looks like. So it's quite nice, isn't it? I'm not going to show you the workings of it, but you know, it's it. Whoa, I don't know. Doesn't, doesn't spin very well. I wonder why that is. But there you go. Um, but yeah, it's 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 nice. It's kind of it could be a little bit more solid feeling, but I think it's a it's a decent pen. So a few people said they wanted to see it closer. So let's have a look. I'll come to your comments in a minute. Uh, hey, Steve, managed to catch your live for the first time. Good. I don't know how to pronounce that. Brulafu. Bru Bru oh, you got a nice, that's a very good um, logo there, isn't it? So, uh, pulls a Steve, this is true. I wanted to get that pen, but mixed reviews as to whether it can be examined. Okay, let's talk about this, because I, di I did mention it. I would feel a bit cagey, so, you know, saying... When you say to someone, have a look at that, you're doing one of two things, aren't you? You're totally confident, confident it isn't that, so you say, have a look at that. Or you're saying, have a look at that, because it is that, but it's, it, they're not going to find out that it is that. I feel a bit cagey, because it, it is that, isn't it? You know, so I, I kind of, I'm going to keep an eye on them if they're playing with that, because if you start messing with it, you could start seeing something. I, and, and that did happen, actually, when someone looked at it. So I think if you're really good at audience management and you're really nonchalant about it, you turn them there and they, they happen to pick it up and have a quick look, that's fine. But if you really over-egg it, they might go, right, I will have a look at it and then start interfering with things. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Ignition, yeah, that looks good, doesn't it? I've not played with that, uh, but I've always fancied it. Right, let's have a look at the comments. There's not much, let's do the Rose and Roy one. There's not really much on the Rose and Roy ones, but I did want to, want to I wanted to talk about something that was on the forums, Magician's Forum. I won't mention names, because they might not want me to. Um, but um, but people say, based on the price alone, this will be of limited appeal. And then this, this thing, you know, the, the, this very niche thing, isn't it? A martini glass that you can vanish, I suppose. It kind of only fits in with certain things. Um, but what is interesting, uh, so do your 50 minute pleasure note with beverage, da da da, also check. Right, and yeah, and this whole thing about a second glass. I, I talked about a routine where you need two of the glasses. Now, there's one that you need a normal martini glass and this glass with. I think you can get away with them not being exactly the same. That's fine. It's kind of um, when you pull the glass together and you've got two. I think it doesn't have to be exactly the same as long as it's kind of there. With the broken and the, the cracked and restored glass, you do have to have two of those glasses. So you just have to buy two separate ones, which is super expensive. And to be honest, just for that effect, I don't really think it's worth it. Um, doesn't mean it's not a good effect, but to buy two of them for that, I, you know. Um, I've noticed that Steve, and this is what I wanted to get to, uh, doesn't really refer to price or value for money. Now, this is um, interesting, isn't it? I often, well, I never mention the price, and I think it annoys some people, and I think you might be right. I don't know. Tell me. My thinking behind it is I always think it's interesting to see an effect and not have that bias of price in your head. So if you see, or maybe I should mention it at the end and that just cancel it all out. But I think that if you if you see my review of it or you see my performance of it or see the trailer of it, I quite like not knowing the price and deciding whether I like it or not just based on whether I like it or not. And I think there's a tendency once we know something, well, I know there is, you know, it's that perceived value thing. If, if someone says I'm gonna show you a trick and it costs you two grand to buy, already, I, I, I'm going to do one of two things. I'm going to make it in my head worth that much. So I'm going to be like, oh, it's amazing because I've got that bias because I know it's really expensive. Or I'm going to go the other way and I'm going to be showing something that's clearly not worth that. And, and So I think it can bias you a lot. So if I don't mention it, I quite like the idea of you going, do I like it? Do I not? Then click on the link and find out the price and then you're either surprised or not. I quite like that. But that might just be me. I will start mentioning price if you want me to. And the price of onlinemagic.co is £9.99 per 
calendar month. There you go. Uh, right. Um, yeah, I want to know the price. Yeah, and I think it's a couple of people mentioning that. So I think, you know, I think it's it's an interesting one, and I will see what you say about it. But let's go to the comments on YouTube. That's what the comments on comments about. Um, Mexi Mex says it's too well known. We, oh, we're going to Perfect Pen now. Because the the comments here on, on the um, Rose and Roy, let me just, I'm flitting around all over the place, aren't I? Uh, can see it's clever by Gary, but to be honest, I'm neither shaking, not stirred. I like that. Um, how, yeah, oh, interesting, from Tom. How sturdy is it? Back to the glass <laughs> from Perfect Pen. I'm making it, I'm varying the rhythm of this show. Um, right, so with that, how sturdy is it? I might have forgotten to mention you. You put it. You have to have it on stand, on stage, which he doesn't provide. I think I did mention it, but that's that is because, and I probably wasn't clear, is that it's not that steady. If you've got liquid in it, you're not going to be able to put it on the table uh, without giving the game away fairly quickly. But before it's there, you can have it in a stand, which is just presenting a glass. I don't think it's going to be suspect. But afterwards, you're going to want to get rid of the thing. And so, if you do the vanish, easy enough. But if you do the production, pop it away. Let's not look at that too closely. Um, <laughs> okay, but if there's anyone, isn't it a Martinez? Very good. So, my issue... Right, back to the perfect pen. My issue with this is a method is too well known to non-magicians. A couple of years ago, somebody, a non-magician, brought one into one of my local boozers, pubs, that is, to our non uh non-native people uh show off pretty much everything they're already they already knew how it works yeah so um interesting i don't i didn't know that and and i could see that being a, a thing really so it's a bit like dynamic coins isn't it and stuff like that uh from david i bought this last year have never performed it to anybody as a hobbyist i don't think it's badly made just have not have other effects I'd rather do. I kind of feel a bit like that about it, but I wonder whether it's because I'm in my head of seeing it so much and whether Mexi's right and other people have or not. I must take it out and just try it more, I think. Um, flipped over productions. Uh, I know people are concerned about swapping out the gimmick for a real pen, but if you really want it to be examinable, it doesn't get better than having them look at a real pen when there's nothing to find. I agree with Mexi though, the method is too well known and it makes me not want to bother at all. So maybe that's the case, even if it's well known, if we can switch it, I, I, I tend to agree. I think if you can switch something out and just go, there you go. Because the, because the thing is, if you've switched it, well, they don't know you switched it, you know what I mean? So, so people always say, oh, why would you do a switch if you didn't have to? Well, the point is in their eyes, you haven't, have you? So it, it, if you can do it well, and I think you can because the effect has happened, they might, they're going to respond, react, and then go, oh. And when they're doing that, I think you're absolutely right. Because it's a pen. You can get it from all manner of places. Um, uh, Derek Rose, I'm sure this is a fine prop. I like to perform magic with bills when I'm uh, in tipping situations. Absolutely. As a magician, I don't think you can improve on the look and authenticity of the Sharpie through anything. Yeah, of course, because we, ca we carry them around as well, don't we? And he's super easy to, to switch that throughout. Um, that throughout. It's because I read the word through there. <laughs> Easy to, easy to push out throughout the world. There you go. Uh, David. Everyone is still there. David Moore, magician. Uh, yeah, very true. I had the original pen about 20 years ago, and it lasted 10 years. The new version is okay, but nowhere near the quality and smooth or solid as the original. Right, I didn't know if I haven't handled the original, but... Um, uh, and it, yeah, interesting. Great review. I have one question regarding a convincer. Can I write with it? Yes, you can. And they teach you how to change the ink in there as well because it's going to be slightly different. So you use a normal ink from a normal pen, but you have to kind of doctor it and they talk you through it. Uh, so that's from Aaron. Gareth, I prefer the cheaper plastic pen version as you can hand that out and requires only. Yep, absolutely. And I, uh, I tend to, yeah, I tend to agree. I think if, it's a, if it looks like a cheaper biro pen, then there is something that's more convincing. And that's why... In, I don't really see, you know, the, what's those, the Sherpa, the Sharpie covers, I think they're beautiful. Um, but I don't use it because I kind of like the, the recognizability of, uh, of Sharpies. Not the, and I like the Harry Potter feed, he takes it out and then he does a gag with it, but, um, I'd rather use Ignition, especially with my handling, it's always like, yeah, I've, everybody keeps mentioning Ignition, maybe I should have a look. TCC all seems great, um. I'm still disappointed I missed out on the uh, 
Yeah, that was about the uh, artistic cups and balls. That was about the um, tr I'm trammeled. Yeah, that was that's good, isn't it? Um, okay. Oh, it's interesting. Colin Underwood still on perfect pen. Hi, mate. I have the original, but bought this new new unit. I really don't see or feel a difference. If the cap is loose, I give it a tap to open and the open end to close it a bit. I borrow a note from a trick and made this an add-on at the beginning. I present this as a test for the counterfeit notes. If it makes a hole, it's counterfeit. That's a good idea, isn't it? All tongue in cheek. This draws attention to the note which I hand back the spectator to examine. Corny jokes about being holy money, etc. And this is done. I pocket the pen. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, read this, by the way. I won't go on because it's, it, it, it's not it's not exposure, but I think it's unfair to read it all. Um, yeah, the gimmick can fly off, so so if you, you've got to be careful about your notes, and uh, sometimes the note tears about the gimmick releasing. Okay, yeah. So I think that's a really it's really thanks for sharing that, Connor. That's someone who goes out and does it, has some tips on why and when it can't work. I like to squeeze the note when penetrated so the note is is wavy rather than flat. Haven't tried plastic notes yet. We go, great. And I'm, and that's not expect you know, no, nobody's reading that that isn't magician. I think that's really good. So have a look at that. Colin's got some tips um, on the comments below. I'll, I'll just basically I just read that in a way that nobody's gonna understand. <laughs> I just did that thing that I get accused of all the time. What I do is I, I sometimes think aloud and think that people know exactly what I'm thinking about, where I haven't started the, the thought with any kind of context. So sorry about that. I just kind of went off in my own world then. Uh, King, okay, yeah, can you please check your Instagram DMs? I did, I got back to you, but thanks for the reminder. Why does this dude look like a skinny Negan from The Walking Dead? Well, it's nice that you're calling me skinny because I haven't spent much of my life, um, n n you know, in that state. But, um, not that being skinny is healthy, I don't mean that. But, um, I did, I did this gig. I did this gig New Year's Eve at Alton Towers. Uh, they did like a big ball there, and I used to I used to do it every year and do a little five minutes before the meal. And there was this big family of uh, of scousers, and they just started shouting out Negan, Negan. I know, and all went on all evening. Every time they saw me, Negan, the whole table. And then every year it was every time I walked in, started they were like Negan. So yeah, it's it's something I've had, and I'm, I've had worse. So I'll, I'll be happy about that. Uh, right, that's that. Um, have say things now, pronounced perfectly. Yeah, I might even make the zoom tonight. Nice. Uh, so, if you've got anything to say to me, say it now, because in a minute I'm gonna pop over the shop, get come back and get ready for my zoom, which I shall be sharing uh, every week at the moment. I'm sharing my professional repertoire, as I've said. If you weren't at the beginning. And uh, and thanks. Oh, we had Luch last week. Luch did a lovely um, lecture as part of the the online Magic Co community. So I really, it's really lovely. It's a really lovely community, isn't it, Mister C? There. That's why I love, and all of you, um, Stuart. That's why I love Ignition. You can hand everything out, and it's very organic with keys. Having them on you all the time. Yeah, I must have that. So if you got a, well, no, I want to get it. I, look, I can't buy anything else, can I? Because I get stuff to review for free. And now you're making me want to buy Ignition. What happens is, I've got this kind of brain, which I think a lot of us have, that when someone mentions a magic trick, even before they've said it's good or bad, I want to buy it. It's terrible. I bought some books this week. I'm terrible. Spent the money I didn't have on Marlowe books. Very exciting, though. Uh, sorry about that question. <laughs> but it's nice to have mint one and two next to each other. So uh, I will play the guitar while I wait for the Zoom and have... Uh, and I have COVID. The Zoom community is awesome. Oh, I'm sorry. I hope you haven't got the. I hope you've got good COVID and not bad COVID. I have bad COVID. I had middle middle COVID actually. Um, what books did you buy? Mint, a minty one. I can show you my handling, and you will never use anything else. Oh, don't say that. Come on. I'll have to write to. Right. I'll have to get one to review, won't I? Um, so, all right. I better go now. And, uh, and prepare. So thanks, everyone. Thanks for coming. It means an awful lot. I really, really enjoy these. Um, so do, after this, or, or I'd love you to share this with someone. If, you, if you'd like, you think someone would like this and you enjoy this show, do please tell people, because uh, I can bang on about it forever. So if you want to post it on social media and just say, you know, 
watch it. If you're a magician, watch this. It's good fun. Um, it, please like and subscribe if you like it. And um, subscribe if you want to subscribe to it. And check out onlinemagic.co. Please have a look at it. I'm very proud of it. It's very wonderful. And it's just great. I'm, and not because I'm great, because I've put so many years into it. And I'm just, it's got to a point now where I go, that's what I wanted. And I'm, I'm all excited about it. Show me the book, please. And I felt awful yesterday, but overdosed on vitamin C, so I'm okay now. Good. I'm glad you're right, mate. Um, right, I'm going to go now. I'm not going to show you the book now because it's at home. And I'm not in my home. I'm in my office space with these books. So have a lovely one. Take care. I'm going to go now and see you next week. I'm going to be here next week, aren't I? Probably. But keep an eye on you. Make sure you hit the little bell icon so you know if I can't make it. See you later, folks. Bye. I've got to press the right one.